You're listening to the Full Core Press with your host, Drew Duncan. Don't you dare touch that dial. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Full Core Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at DrewDuncan83. You want to know who's all over social media right now? John Gruden. As a matter of fact, according to Mr. Davis, John effing Gruden, because apparently it's a big effing deal. Man, you want to talk about going for the gusto. I mean, this is like a, a WWE production, right? I almost feel like when John Gruden was introduced, I heard the glass break, and I swear I heard the voice of Jim Ross. (laughs) Oh, man. You know what? It is really Super Bowl or bust for one John Gruden. Look, uh, people are too enamored right now, I think. With this whole $100 million, 10-year deal. At the end of the day, you want to know what makes you $100 million? Winning football games. Now, I will say this. John Gruden is in a far better position than I think people will give him credit for. Look, Jack Del Rio, I think, took this team as far as he could. Last year was, I think, the year that everybody thought that the Oakland Raiders, or this season, uh, was going to be the year that the Raiders finally got over the hump. Car at quarterback, Michael Crabtree, wide receiver, Amari Cooper, Cooper at wide receiver. You get out, you acquire Marshawn Lynch. You, you've got a phenomenal defense, and they couldn't get the job done. But now there's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of unanswered questions. Number one, the coaching staff with John Gruden, how are they going to mesh well with the offensive style of Derek Carr? Well, number one, I think they're going to do good. You look at what John Gruden did with another quarterback. His name was Brad Johnson. Gruden knows how to coach quarterbacks. Look at the Gruden coaching camp. He knows how to coach quarterbacks. So I think that this is going to be an okay mesh. I really do. I think Carden or Carr and Gruden are going to be a good combination. Yeah, I think that Gruden, being that he's been in broadcasting for the last 19 years, is going to have an understanding that a lot of other coaches in the NFL don't seem to have an understanding of, and that is the way the modern game is played offensively what works and what doesn't work. Look, Dick Vermeil, when he was with the St. Louis Rams, was in the very same situation that John Gruden is right now. Dick Vermeil had a so-so career coaching leading up to his time in the broadcasting booth. Had one good season with the Philadelphia Eagles, went to a Super Bowl, ended up losing, but they didn't have the greatest season uh, going into the Super Bowl that year. And I start thinking about Dick Vermeil and how well he did when he came out of the broadcast booth. The first year, nah, but they were able to get things going. He took a chance on Kurt Warner, as as Dick Vermeil was known for doing at the time, giving guys chances that maybe other people wouldn't, that he saw something in, and it ended up working. And I think that Gruden is in the same situation, and that's why it could work, and that's why I think modern modernizing the game offensively a little bit more than maybe Del Rio did is going to be a big plus for this Oakland Raiders football team. I look defensively, and I I see a guy in John Gruden who appreciates both sides of the football. He loves that hard-nosed style of play. He's very old school in his mentality when it's in that regard. So I think as far as the defensive standpoint goes, he will keep the Oakland Raiders tradition going. Look, you heard John Gruden. I love this town. I love Raider football. Everywhere we go, there's Raider Nation. I've been doing journalism now for X amount of years. And these guys have popularity wherever we go. He loves the stigma with the Raiders, the tradition of the Raiders. The Oakland Raiders have one of the richest histories in all the NFL. And Gruden is a guy that exudes that kind of history. The attitude on the field, everybody. I, you know, the one thing that I'm surprised that people aren't talking about is the, you know, the looks on his face that he would get that people would make fun of looking like the Chucky doll. The attitude, will he continue, though, with that kind of coaching going forward with the Raiders? Is this something that he's going to continue to do, or is he kind of mellowed out in terms of how he'll be on the sideline? That's the thing to me. 
not all the players responded positively to his type of reinforcement. And understandably so, it's not for everybody. Gruden is not a guy that's beyond ripping you a new one while you're on the sideline right in the middle of a football game. We've seen it before with other coaches. Bo Pelini. We've seen it at the collegiate level. Bobby Knight. Remember Bobby Knight throwing chairs and kicking basketballs and headbutting guys on the sideline? Will that be something that we see in Gruden, that kind of mentality that he had before? To me, that's the big question. And it's a huge one, and that's the one that leads me to the Super Bowl or bust. Look, Charlie Weiss was being paid for how many years by the Notre Dame Fighting Irish when he wasn't even coaching there anymore? Until he took that job at KU, right? Just because the number's been thrown out there, the amount of time that he signed the contract for is out there, just because the money number is out there, all that stuff, just because it's out there, that doesn't mean that three seasons go by and he's not performing, that he's out the door. And when you have a team that's as talented as this football team is, and already Crabtree has been maybe looking to go somewhere else, you have to wonder how Gruden may or may not affect guys wanting to stay or come to the Raiders. Believe it or not, in the NFL, with the way free agency is now, you almost have to look at it like it's another form of recruiting. Because that's to me, that's exactly what it is. You have to be able to recruit guys. Remember when Peyton Manning went to the Denver Broncos, how awestruck everybody was that he was there, and Peyton Manning's the type of guy that free agents will want to come and play for? Remember that? I think it's the same thing in coaching, if not even more so. Because philosophies, styles, all those kinds of things are going to go into it. Is he an approachable guy? Is his door truly open? Because as we all know, regardless of age, being a coach, you're still going to be big brother. You're still going to be a father figure to some guys. You're going to have to be a disciplinarian. It's just the way that it is. Can I accept his style of discipline? Can I accept his style of practice? I mean, the rumor with Chip Kelly was NFL guys really didn't want to concede to it because they felt like they were just being run to death. And that's a lot of the big part of why people say Chip Kelly's not in the NFL because he demanded entirely too much on the practice field. Is that going to be the same thing with Coach Gruden? Or will his knowledge of the game now that is... Because look, when you look at John Gruden and how he approached that, that game... Right, That playoff game a couple of days ago, if you watched it, it wasn't like Gruden was doing his normal Gruden camp. It looked like he was looking at those guys like, I'm going to see you on the field next year, bud. I'm scouting you now. I'm not interviewing you anymore. I'm scouting you. The look on his face, his mannerisms, everything about him completely changed overnight. Everything. You knew the announcement was going to come. It is Super Bowl or bust for John Gruden. With everything that he knows about these teams, and what a move by the Raiders, by the way. What a move. How many years now has John Gruden's name come up? And you would hear guys all the time, it's never going to happen. John Gruden's not going anywhere. He loves what he's doing entirely too much. Every year, the fans go crazy. And can we get John Gruden? He's out there. Let's go and hire him. And what's amazing to me now is a lot of those same fans are out there wrecking John Gruden, saying that he had the best type of situation in Tampa Bay, that he took over Tony Dungy's team and got him to a Super Bowl. Well, he did have a good situation, but it wasn't a great situation. You don't want to be the guy who follows the guy. And to be honest with you, Tony Dungy couldn't get that team over the hump. How long was Tony Dungy with the Indianapolis Colts before he finally won a playoff game? Bill Callahan You could say the same thing about him walked into a great situation that John Gruden left behind with the Raiders. And how long did he last there? Especially after John Gruden stuck it to him and the Raiders in the Super Bowl. And after that, they fell apart, did the Raiders. Everybody's talking about win-loss percentage and all this previous stuff that happened beforehand. You know what, guys? That was years ago. I mean, that has literally been basically a decade ago I think it's time to put it in the past and see what's going to happen in the future. Do I think that John Gruden can win games with the Raiders given the knowledge that he's accrued over the last decade in sports journalism? Absolutely. And I think the one great thing that this does, at least to me, maybe on a personal level more than anything, 
is in some way it brings legitimacy to sports journalism. You've got guys like Vermeil, you've got guys like Madden, you've got guys like John Gruden that have been a part of the game of football on the biggest stage in both aspects, and it shows you just how much knowledge you can truly acquire through through journalism, this field, if you dedicate yourself and put your mind to it. John Gruden to me is that guy right now. I, I think that the one thing that I'll be looking for is whether or not him and Derek Carr are able to get along. I think the style of play will work, but will they be able to get along off the field, on the field? How will that relationship be? Because without a shadow of a doubt, Derek Carr is the leader of that football team. And if you don't believe me, go back and look at Derek Carr's interview a couple of seasons ago when they were a a 10-11 win football team. They were playing in a game, right? He went hurt. He got you know, he was hurt. He went down, which, by the way, they were dominating in that football game. He really probably shouldn't have been in at that point. And guys were coming in the locker room afterwards, some of them crying. But every single teammate at some point came in to check on Derek Carr. See, that's the mark of a leader. Now, that's the kind of guy that a John Gruden loves. Will he be able to make that relationship work? Look, we know he can coach quarterbacks. Can the personalities mix well? A better example of ones that didn't, Dan Reeves and John Elway. And when push come to shove, Pat Bowen had to make a choice finally one time, and it was either Dan Reeves or John Elway, and he went with John Elway. If your quarterback is loved enough, believe me when I tell you, the head coach is out the door. This is the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find me at DrewDuncan83. I've got a lot more to discuss. We'll be back right after this. Don't you dare touch that dial.